Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the inaugural $5,000 Modern Open hosted by Apex Gaming here in beautiful Caldwell, Ohio. I'm Tandy, a.k.a. Todd Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We got four rounds in the books and we're about to bring you a heater for round number five. Ross, why don't you go ahead and tell us about the players and the decks they'll be wielding. Well, if you were here with us last round, you saw Brad Marsh on Rakdos Scam take down Living End, largely thanks to a Blood Moon in game three. Well, we're going to be watching him again, and he's going to need those Blood Moons because he's up against Joshua Waddell, and Waddell is playing Tron. Well, Tron is always a very scary deck to play against unless you're playing a very specific type of deck. Uh, they go really big, really fast over the top of most opponents. We'll see if that is the case, but the scam deck with those Blood Moons, those griefs with all of those ways to do the scamming might be a little too much for them to handle. Yeah, definitely uh, could be an issue. It's really going to be about tearing the hand apart early, applying a lot of pressure, and then fading the top of the deck. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never faded the top of the deck one time against trying in my whole life. I'm guessing you've done it many times. Probably. You're a liar, Todd. I'm not a liar. I'm just a very good storyteller. That is the same thing. <laughs> All right. Well, the players are seated in the feature match area and doing pregame action. So let's head on down there so we can talk about the players in the decks they'll be piloting. On your left is our big man, Joshua Dell, normally known for playing those mill decks with Hedron Crabs. We were talking about that last round, but has decided to set down the Crabs in favor of the Karns. And we have uh, a lot of them in this deck. You know, Karn the Great Creator and Karn Liberated, both usually in these shells, both big payoffs for having those Tron mana sources. Ross, can you confirm that for me? Yeah, Waddell's List does have both cards. Only two card liberated, but four card the Great Creator. Uh, has a pretty diverse package of threats. Two copies of Ugin the Ineffable, one Oblivion Stone, one Karn Silex. Let's be real. That Ugin is effable. Yeah. Okay. One All is Dust, <laughs> one Walking Ballista, one Golos. Plenty of extra mm. copies of these threats in the sideboard to get with those baby Karns. So awesome. a lot of different threats. Importantly, only one Relic of Regenerus in the main. That can be a good card at breaking up some of the scammy scams right. on the Rakdos right. side. All right, well, it looks like both players are taking a mulligan. We did watch Brad Marsh playing last round with that scam deck against uh, Living In, was able to take it down, thanks uh, in no no small part to both Unlicensed Hearse and Blood Moon. As you already pointed out, Blood Moon, a very powerful card against Monogreen Tron. But the addition of things like uh, Basaji, who endures, and the ability to tutor for lands at will, perhaps, you know, the Tron deck is insulated from Blood Moon these days. It's not as good as it used to be. Uh, but it is definitely still a very effective card, especially if you can power it out early with, say, a Raghavan. <laughs> uh, but notably, you know, these Rakdos decks, they often have some Blood Moons in the main deck. All of Brad's are in the sideboard, all three copies. So, going to have to go without it in game one. You got to assume that these players know the matchup. They've been sitting around near the same tables all day. Uh, and so, I think Marsh just mulliganing aggressively, knows he needs a very specific kind of hand in this matchup. Not so much the spot removal, needs the hand disruption and the pressure. And as far as Vidal taking a mulligan, well, that's what you sign up for when you're when you yeah. playing well, Tron. One thing I like to stress to uh, newer players getting into older formats like Modern or Legacy or even Pioneer is the power of the London mulligan. Being able to take a look at a fresh set of seven, putting back one or two cards is often more important than keeping a seven card hand, especially in decks that just need a very few specific cards to function. Turn one Raghavan on the play for, for Brad Marsh here. Probably the best possible in this matchup. I would say even better than Thoughtseize because they just don't have early answers to the right. Raghavan. And that tempo boost is really powerful. So uh, Raghavan coming through. And Waddell looks... Uh, it's it's hard with these new versions of cards, but I think he's got at least two different Tron lands. That was a tower played on turn one. And I think holding either of the mine or power plant. All right, well, we are going to be playing on Brad Marsh's turn a Castle Lockthwain as the second land. In my opinion, the worst land in the deck. It comes in uh, to play tapped so often. Luckily for Marsh, does have the ability to use some mana still this turn. Has a Thought Seize lined up. I'm going to take a look at Hannah. Sylvan's Crying, Ugin the Ineffable, Urza Saga, Forest, and I believe Warm Coil Engine. Back Waddell's way. Sylvan Scrying. Yeah. So actually not many pieces towards Tron here for Waddell. Yeah, could uh, crack the star. Has green source in hand, but kind of wants to try to look for uh, Ancient Stirrings or something similar. Finds an Expedition map. Cannot play and crack this turn, but uh, can play this turn with the mana floating. Going to deploy an Urza Saga. Newer addition to the archetype. Yeah. And uh, back Brad Marsh's way. Map gets us a little bit closer. Back for two from Raghavan. 
What's the reveal? It's an Ancient Stirrings. Could find a land. Could be worth casting here, especially if he doesn't have anything to do with the mana. You gotta figure he doesn't have a land if he played the tapped castle last turn, so... Yeah, maybe dig for a land. Spend a mana to dig for a land seems pretty reasonable. They don't make many cards these days like Ancient Stirrings. Dig super deep and find some very specific stuff. An excellent enabler in Tron. Remember when everybody wanted to ban it? I do, but I wanted to unban Ponder and Preordain, personally. Well, that's even more ludicrous. Whatever. Have you played with Consider? It's excellent. Excellent. I actually think Consider is better than Preordain. I think putting a card in the graveyard has an X factor to it for stuff like Murktide that uh, are just, you know, the sorcery speed Preordain just cannot compete with. I, perhaps that's an unpopular opinion, but, you know, I don't think anyone's played with Preordain in quite a while. There's no perhaps about it, Todd. Yeah? I want you to show me. Build, build, build me a preordained deck with Murktide and tell me if it's better. I will. No, you won't. You're, you're too lazy. Yeah, much like you, I am a liar. <laughs> no, no, no. Good storyteller. You gotta be, <laughs> gotta be clear. All right, we're gonna main phase pop the expedition map. Gonna go get a land. Waddell getting ever so closer to Tron, but still at least one piece away. Could draw next turn. I believe that's Urza's power plant. Yeah, that's definitely three words in that the name. Now, this season, Pyromancer represents a lot of pressure for Brad Marsh here. I think he has a Terminate at the ready, too, so could potentially clear Blocker, although killing a Warm Cool Engine with a Terminate doesn't really solve the problem. Fury, not the greatest card here. Might have wanted to discard that over something like Lightning Bolt if he had the choice. So the very worst Videl can find an Expedition map with the Urza Saga and then get the next Tron land, but that only leaves him five mana. So I'll have to tap one of the Tron lands in order to pop the map. All right, here comes an attack for six. Feeling Warping Whale. That one is not castable with the mana base Bradley Marsh currently has. All right, let's see what the follow-up is here. We have a Fury. Looks like we have one of our Undying cards. Not the best, but we could just hard cast a Fury and threaten lethal next turn. Terminate can clear out a Saga blocker. I think that that might be enough yeah. to get through. You could also kill whatever the Worm Coil Engine blocks and maybe get enough damage through. There you go. That's my plan. Jam All right. Fury Lee. Here we go. And yeah, yeah. Waddell just a kind of clunky six, but definitely got to assume that he's wishing he took a second mulligan there. You know, this typically don't want a mulligan against Thoughtseize Grief decks, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, especially right. when you're playing Zitron. So, we're floating a mana. We're going to go get Expedition Map. We can crack that with our Power Plant. Go get Mine. Mine plus Towers. Only five mana. Worm Coil rotting in hand. Lethal in play for Marsh. Let's see if Waddell has any defenses here to put up. If we have a Karn, we might be able to get Haywire Might and Chump Block the Fury. Go to 12 and take six. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Just gotta buy a turn. <laughs> yeah. So the terminate on Haywire Might, you go to 12, and then you take exactly 12, which is, as the French say, less sad. I was gonna say less sad. They could say either one. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they say less sad, though. No. They're too lit tired. <laughs> All right. Well, Waddell, going through the permutations in hand, uh, has Oblivion Stone, but can't quite play and pop it. And I think with only access to five mana after the crack of the map decides to pack it in, that's 1-0 for Brad Marsh winning what I would consider to be the hardest game to win now uh, with a bunch of Blood Moon and stuff coming in. Perhaps uh, maybe a little too much for Waddell to handle, huh? Yeah, looking good for Brad taking that first game. And Waddell being a Karn the Great Creator deck doesn't have a lot to bring in. A lot of one-ofs as wish targets. There's a Walking Ballista, a Worm Coil Engine, a Cityscape Leveler, a Sundering Titan, a Chalice of the Void, a Pithing Needle, a Relic of Progenitus, a Liquid Metal Coating, a Stone Brain, an Ensnaring Bridge, a Karn Silex, an Oblivion Stone, and a Trinisphere, alongside two copies of Nature's Claim. Imagine those are coming in to answer those Blood Moons. Yep. Um, but, you know, it, as far as bringing in any of the Wish targets, you can sometimes bring them in if you've got cards in your sideboard or in your main deck you want to bring out. But I'm looking at these two Warping Whales that don't seem all that great. Every other main deck card is very tenable, so I think it's just a swap of two Warping Whales for two Nature's Claim. Oh, sounds good. 
Uh, warping well doesn't seem that bad though, right? Isn't that a decent answer to Raghavan? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, why is it in the deck? It does a certain thing, right? There's can... indomitable creativity. Yeah, and, that's true. You know, sometimes ramps you, so you get to eight mana on turn three for like an Ugin or a four four Ballista. Um, so it, it has a lot of applications in the deck, but does not seem great in this matchup. Oh, no. And to me, I don't want to board out threats if I'm Waddell. I want to keep the top of my deck as juicy as possible yep. because you've got to expect your opponent's going to tear your hand apart with thought seizes and griefs. All right. Well, as the, the, these two players are shuffling up here for game number two, just want to shout out our sponsors for the Apex Gaming Series, Ultimate Guard. Check out ultimateguard.com. Or sorry, check out your local distributors and pick up some Ultimate Guard product. Uh, your local game store likely has some awesome Ultimate Guard product for you. We'll also be giving away tons of Ultimate Guard product on the Apex Gaming Season 3 train. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about that right now, though, until we get more uh, information. But, Ross, how about this Racto sideboard? What's coming in? So I've ran last round, so going over a sideboard again, we've got the second copy of Fatal Push, the fourth copy of Terminate, three Engineered Explosives, three Unlicensed three Blood Moon, two Torok Dread Canter, and two Shielded the Apocalypse. Much like last round against Living End, I think sideboarding is going to be both motivated by cards you want to bring in and cards you want to bring out, namely the spot removal spells that are quite weak in the matchup. So gotta love Blood Moon. I would definitely be bringing in Torok Dread Canter as well. You know, that supplements your thought seizes uh, and griefs mm -hmm. fairly well. I could also see bringing in Shieldred. Sometimes it just closes the game, especially if your opponent has a bunch of those Chromatic Stars in play and Granic Spheres and is popping those to try to dig for key threats. You can start shocking them for each one. All right, as the players shuffle up here for game number two, we're going to have Joshua Dell on your left on the play with Mono Green Tron. Riley Marsh on your right with Rakdos Scam. We talked a bit about what both players are going to be bringing in, but Josh Waddell really limited by that Karn package in his sideboard. Just a couple of Nature's Claims to handle the Blood Moons. Does have uh, at least one Besaju in the main deck that you can find off of things like Expedition Map and Sylvan Scrying, and those can also be helpful in blowing up the uh, those powerful Blood Moons. Yeah, Waddell does have one Besaju in the main deck, so. March taking a mulligan to six, a very common thing to happen in modern. Can't sweat mulligans too much. The decks operate on low resources quite well. It's more so about finding the right cards and the right matchups to have the greatest effect. I saw Thoughtseize in the opening seven, so I thought maybe that would be good enough, but for Marsh, I guess not. Well, Raghavan just has so much free mana, right? Like, I don't know. Opponent just probably not going to have much to deal with it. I see a Fury, I see a Terminate, I see a Thoughtseize, I think I see a second Fury at the back of Marsh's hand, so does not seem great, but on six, maybe you keep it and hope to find one of the scam cards so you can get a 4-4 Double Striker down. Yeah, or just Double Grief, I believe there is a Grief hanging out, so maybe that's the plan, discard Terminate, find the, the Scammer, doesn't find yeah, it. I do see a Grief there. Could be waiting. Could do it this turn just to get a discard going. Chromatic Star and Urza Land from Waddell is a great start. And a Thoughtseize from March. I didn't see that one. That's a nice play for turn one. Wisely getting a basic Swamp because he knows wants to make Blood Moon in even as good of a draw as possible. All right. Waddell's cards are written on. <laughs> That's, it's pretty good. I We've got Urza's Mine, Sylvan Scrying, Ancient Stirrings, some sort of giant threat. A Planeswalker, yeah, probably an Ugin or a Karn Liberated, and a Cascading Cataracts. That's the uh, combo land with Golos. Yeah. But even against in the face of a Thoughtseize, this hand is going to be able to dig five cards deeper to find that third Tron piece. So uh, a solid hand from Waddell here. Yeah, I agree. Even through the Thoughtseize, a, a very nice seven. Star does cycle next turn, allows him to play the Ancient Stirrings. So he's going to get a draw step, a crack of the star, and five looks. So that's seven deep looking for the third Tron piece or some way to find the third Tron piece. Something like Expedition Map, I think, is a reasonable find as well. Yeah, and with seven cards already out of the deck, uh, Waddell probably a, close to a coin flip to find it. Because you're 40% started with 60 cards. All right, Waddell, draw step. See if he gets there. They're just checking life totals. Marsh should be at 17 here from the fetch and the Thoughtseize. Mm -hmm. 
Liddell draws Relic of Progenitor. That's a nice pickup that can stop the scam stuff and gives him something to do with his mana if he whiffs on the uh, Ancient Stirrings. Finds a Ugin the Ineffable. And now Ancient Stirrings is going to dig five deep. Yeah. There's some temptation to want to just play second Tron piece Relic Go and hold up the one mana in case of a scam. Uh, but I don't think you can reasonably not cast the Ancient Stirrings here because your opponent has so much more discard in their deck and you really don't want to lose that. I'm honestly a little surprised Marsh didn't th throw the Grief away right there just yeah. to take both green cards and make sure he can keep his opponent off of Tron. And now we find the map. It's a second Tron piece map, and we're going to have Tron rolled up next turn. Yeah, and we'll be able to play a Relic of Genitus and maybe pop it next turn. I don't think it'll be that effective, but it does cycle. allows you to use the extra mana generated by finding Tron next turn. Because we will have to start the turn essentially by cracking the map and going down to just two mana once we find the third Tron piece. Now, if he naturally draws the third Tron piece, could deploy one of those big Planeswalkers next turn. That's always the fear when you're playing against Monogreen Tron. Always fearing the top of their deck. And you know, the Tron players, I always rip it. Well, filthy, filthy triangle. Well, let's see if uh, if Waddell's able to draw it. But first, Brad Marsh fetches a basic swamp. What is the play? I don't see much going on in Marsh's hand. Might see a scammed grief here, or an evoked grief, no scam. Uh, and that, you know, will take a threat, but I think there's two big threats in Waddell's hand, so doesn't mind losing one of them. All right. Passes the turn, fetches the second swamp just to thin the deck, but also maybe bluffing something. Unsure. Someone's crying the draw. Pretty useless at the moment. We're probably going to go map Tron land, Relic of Progenitus. Maybe activate, maybe just tap it, maybe draw a card. Now, we could potentially play this slow because you're not under any pressure. So mm -hmm. you could map for Forest here and then Sylvan Scrying for the last Tron piece next turn, but then you really run up all of more discard. Uh, but it is definitely better against Blood Moon. All right, well, it looks like we're going to go get the third Tron piece, the tower being the third Tron piece. Ooh, what the hell were you thinking it? Maybe he likes your line better, but in the face of the grief on the other side, I don't know that I love it, but Marsh putting up some strong signals that a Blood Moon could be coming next turn by fetching Basic Swamp, Basic Swamp. Yeah, exactly right. So if you are if you notice that from Waddell's side, and it, you got to think, like, you know, maybe my opponent would have played more discard on the previous turn if they had it. Uh, but Waddell does ultimately get the tower, so... I wonder if that was a purposeful main phase to signal the Blood Moon from Brad Marsh as a bluff. But Waddell, maybe not falling for it here, does go get the third Tron piece. Has the ability to uh, tap for three mana to play something from hand here. Sometimes you can go overboard selling a bluff, and then your opponent's like, nah, you're, you're, you're act. All right, plays the Relic, no pop. Pass back, Raghavan the draw, we're going to fetch quickly. Now, if you're Waddell, you're thinking, dang it, here comes a Blood Moon. But I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a dash Raghavan. Which is A-OK -okay if you are Josh Waddell. It's uh, way better for you, for sure. Going to go fetch Mountain. Down 15. Is there, has there been a secret blood moon hiding out in your hand, Bradley? Maybe. we. Uh, he did have a thought seize I didn't see earlier. I thought that red card was a fury. Three mana. Yep. It is. Back blood of the moon? hand, the okay. blood moon, he missed it, and Waddell punished for not getting the forest off of that expedition map. And now really just doesn't have much going on. Well, in a few turns, could just deploy an Ugin the Ineffable for six mana, and that can blow up a colored permanent, the Blood Moon specifically. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up happening, and then we just use Relic of Progenitus to make sure we don't get double scammed. Yeah, the good news for Waddell is you're not under any pressure, so you've got time to draw out of this. I don't think there's much pressure coming. Yeah, I guess we've got a Ragam in here. Okay, Grief. Take the Ugin. Yeah, great, great cast from Brad Marsh. Now, to note, the Blood Crypt does enter untapped and does not deal two damage thanks to the Blood Moon. The Grief here going to be stripping Josh Waddell of a card. My guess is going to be the Ugin, the Ineffable. Yeah. Can we get confirmation on what that other Planeswalker and Waddell It's a Karn Liberated. If it was a Karn the Great Crater, it would not have three abilities. I'm 99%. It could also be an Ugin. 
Uh, I, I'm I'm just sure it's Karn. Why don't you just believe me? It does look like Karn liberated. Yeah. There he is. He's the ah. What is happening? How's it going, everybody? Karn liberated. He's free now, so he's stretching out. Ah. That's like when Reader Repulsa emerges after ten thousand years. Of the beginning yes. Of the Dude, have you uh, seen or heard anything about the new Power Rangers movie that God, they no. came out with? I am excited to watch it. A could not care less. Well, you're just like the biggest grub. <laughs> <laughs> I was a huge Power Rangers fan when I was a kid. And now, I now it every day, four thirty. Yep, four thirty. I was yeah. one of the kids watching it in the morning, bro. No, it came on in, in my market. It came on at four thirty in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. After I got home, nice reruns. I was watching Felix the Cat. Well, they were pressure. They were really into cats back in the day. Cats and turtles. That's a nice little curve. Turn three blood moon, turn four grief, turn five fury. Let's get this game over. Hodgepodge group of knuckleheads coming in, dealing serious damage, and Josh Waddell is on a two turn clock. Here's another place, a Dash Ragavan. Still this the same clock. 11 damage attack. Dealt down to six, and now if he can't deal with the fury, he is looking at a lethal attack next turn. Chromatic Sphere is the fine. That is a nice little one to cast and maybe cycle to draw a card. As Terminate in hand does Brad Marsh, so can clear a blocker. Looks like Fain Death as well, so yeah, any that removal. That should be, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. comes back. All right. That's a, a saga too. Is that, go, is that Golos? I think that's, that's a Golos. Golos. All right. There's a Golos. Tireless Pilgrim, but okay. with Terminate in hand from Bradley Marsh, not going to be enough. We'll get the forest and feign some ability to get back into this game. But Nature's claim my own thing to gain four life? Still not good enough. Dash Ragavan's 11. Plus Nature's claim would 100% hit a Blood Moon. All right, here's a Terminate for the Golos with Dell. Pack it in. Game and match. Brad Marsh, 5-0. Likely your first person into the top eight. Racto oh. Scam showing off. With that win, that does mean we're going to have three players at 5-0 and oh after this round. So one of them will unfortunately get the pair down and yeah. be forced to play next round. So Brad is going to be hoping that he does not hit that 33 percenter. 